Hey everyone, this is James from Build Tune Race, back in the shop again working on Bernie, the burnout truck. We're gonna try to get the front end on this thing today, figure out a battery. So we actually found the original battery mount, and I'm gonna actually probably cut this inner fender out to retain just this lower portion, so then all that can mount back in, and it'll actually stabilize this corner a little bit, so I don't think that'll be too bad. But I know all of this will not work because it would hit the new zoomies. So went ahead and ordered so if you guys saw in the other video, I went ahead and ordered off of eBay what they consider is like an S10 swap radiator. It also fits like an 84 Corvette or something. And then I got these small pusher fans uh, because I thought that when I bought this, I thought it would recess into this radiator support, but it doesn't. I even tried to clearance a little bit if you guys can see that, uh, but it actually sits on the outside. So I went ahead and put two pusher fans on it. So it will actually push through and then I still have a little bit of room on the inside of the engine bay uh, before it starts to get into this pulley here. So should have plenty of room, but we want to get all this stuff in, mounted, mocked up. Now that we're done with all this stuff up front, then we can measure for radiator hoses, get everything started to plumb over to the radiator, and then start finishing out the front end. And then we can work on wiring the fans, the EFI, and everything together because everything will be mounted at that point, as well as the battery. This bolt right here, I'm gonna go ahead and retain that, which is this one right here. Just a little bit past it, and then start coming out and drawing an angle down here, and then keeping the battery mount right in this area. I think this will do, or at least this will be a good starting point. Let's go ahead and cut here, across there, down. Cut that off, get rid of all that, and then retain this and bolt it in and see where we're at. The battery tray actually bolts off of that mount there, there, and then the core support. And then the, the back side is just kind of sits here for some uh, support. And then has this hole here, which I think just allows the bolt to kind of go through it as you tighten down the battery on the mount. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that cut, set it up in there and see how it looks. Well, well, I was cutting out the battery died, so Alex and I decided to throw the radiator up on here. And I read somewhere about stock radiator hoses kind of working. And, well, not too bad. It does have this kink here, but what I'm thinking is I could probably cut and shorten this up there. And then Alex and I are talking probably maybe shorten this one up here. Bring that in so it doesn't come out here and touch the radiator. Cut the other one a little bit shorter, let it suck in so then it's not kinking it so bad right here. But... For a radiator hose that just pops on there and works, that's actually not too bad. And then the lower radiator hose is gonna be real easy. I mean, it's, it's gonna be real close. Uh, as you guys can see, this is what I was talking about, the radiator cap, it's, I don't know if I'm gonna have to clearance that or maybe I'll tilt it or maybe I can make it work just like that, uh, depending on what I come up with it for the mount exactly. Maybe the radiator will lean forward just a hair, something, we'll see what I can come up with on the hoses where everything seems to be happy. As you can see, there's still plenty of room to the front of the engine. Uh, I'm just going to end up looping these, put a little, little 45 hose right there. And this might actually work out pretty decent. And then you can see the fans out here have plenty of room uh, to sit in there and stuff, so no worries there. I just got to figure out exactly where I want it side to side, and that'll kind of, we'll figure out off the hoses. Uh, I'd like it to be centered, but if it has to be a little to one side or the other, I'm okay with it. For, for what it is, it's not, not too dang bad right there. Trying to cut up and that works. So we got a lower, easy enough. The upper though is just too long and it wants to come over here and kink. We should cut, we shorten it up and I could probably make it work, but then it's always gonna run with a little kink. So what I did is I went ahead and took some welding rod. Same thing I do on all the builds to find a radiator hose. And more or less bent this to the shape and length that it needs to be. To make it work, I'll also take this one to the store with me too. Uh, I'll walk into AutoZone or O'Reilly and ask them to go in the back and look at hoses and find something that is hopefully close to this. If it was just shorter right here in this straight, we could have made that work, but it's a little too long. So um, I could probably make it work with the radiator slid over to the driver's side, but I'd like the radiator to be centered. So I'm just gonna go see if I can find a radiator hose that will work for the top. Alrighty, so we ended up going to the parts stores, but due to the coronavirus and all of the shutdown orders, we actually just received a stay at home order uh, that it looks like they shut down early. So they're not open at their usual time. So we weren't able to get the uh, radiator hose and a couple other things. So we came back, bolted the front end on, make sure we got all the pieces. Looks like the bumper's got a little chinga there. We'll go ahead and get fixed, but 
Otherwise, I ended up cutting that inner fender and it looks like it's gonna work out pretty well. Comes right in here. Then the battery mount will go there. So as soon as I get that in here, then I can get the battery in it and then start wiring. I'm actually gonna go ahead and rob this power wire that came with the truck. Run that over to the starter. I think it'll work. It's gonna be close. Yeah, I think it'll be okay. And I still need to get a starter too for the truck. So once I have all that, I can kind of wire that stuff in and run some wires in the truck and then get to wiring it. So plumbing is almost done once we get a couple more radiator hoses and that other fuel fitting, I can finish pretty much all the plumbing and then it's on to wiring this thing. I almost kept forging forward on the front end and ended up getting the bumper, the grill, the headlight buckets in, everything. We got to figure out which headlights. We actually have some like eBay style, like LED ones and stock ones. And then we ended up getting the battery tray in here as well. So the battery is in here. I got to figure out what I'm going to do with this battery if I want to run this top and side post adapters, if that's okay or not. Um, the Holly wants you to put a side post, the ECU on side posts or on their own posts. So usually the side posts and then you can run everything else off the top post. Um, I just got to figure out exactly what I want to do there. Otherwise we have it in here, the little pieces in there, everything's kind of complete. So not looking too bad really. And now you guys can kind of see what the truck looks like all together. Not too, too bad, I don't think. See the little zoomies? See the little zoomies sticking out the hood? But otherwise, starting to come together. Like eBay ones that kind of came with it has these little LED strips or whatever. I don't think I'll be using the headlights much, but you tell us what you think. You guys like the OE clear? or the aftermarket. I think, I'm think i thinking I'm liking the clear, honestly. But uh, maybe you guys will like that one. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments which one you think looks better. So just got back from the parts store, ended up taking this hose and my little wire to see if I could find anything. This is about the closest they had, even though it is a bigger tube. So might look at using that. Still might be able to cut and make that one work. But I also got a splice kit, so I might try to cut and see which one's gonna lay in here better and then go from there, at least try it. I could always go get a new S10, which makes it nice. If all I gotta do is know that I gotta splice the stock S10 one, it makes it pretty easy for future ones if I need another one. I'd like to have as few as possible splices in the heater hose in case, I mean, this thing's gonna build a ton of heat in the burnout, so if I can keep it from wanting to overheat and possibly pop a hose and all of that, that'd be best. Uh, I got some other stuff, also went and got some wiring today. So gonna work on starting to wire in the main power for the system and all of that. So we're gonna go ahead and get going on that. I also got some injectors in. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the guys those. Here is the stock hose. I'm kind of looking at where it comes out. It doesn't really kink too bad. It gets a little, little bend in it right there, but not bad. So then I'm gonna come over here, cut it where it's straight, and then let the hoses lay and figure out where they kind of overlap, cut, and then use a little splice kit. At least get that tied in. So at least I have an operator hose. The lower one was super easy. Just took a 90 that was already off of the other hose and just cut it shorter, get the clamps on there. And then also I ended up getting the piece for the water pump to you this so then that can be all done so i went ahead and got it cut so i'm going to it's a little close here i got this is that splice kit that i'm not all that thrilled about using we're going to go ahead and use the splice kit insert it right here and then i'm actually going to reuse this little mount probably transfer it over here to squeeze this pipe to squeeze this tube right here over a little bit so that i can keep clearance to the alternator so then it's not wanting to rub and then we should have an alternator. At least this one will get us going and try it. Uh, eventually I might end up putting some AN line and just doing AN hose. Who knows, maybe I'll get an electric water pump like the Mazda. Not sure, but if this will work for now, at least I can get the truck around and try it and then always be on the search for a different hose or possibly end up adapting that to AN and building an AN hose or something like that. Cause a nice, AN, even an nice AN 90 though, would put it close to this. It is kind of tight here to the front of the motor, but make this work for now and then we'll figure it out from there on uh, and see what's needed maybe this will work just fine maybe it won't but we will go ahead and try it the hose all spliced and done up together not not in love with it but it's not bad so I'm gonna try that if it doesn't work then I'll figure something else out but this uh, kickback right here because it's so close to alternators kind of what screws you but otherwise it's not too bad it doesn't have too bad of kinks it just kind of flows pretty decent but that is gonna have to do to at least get started. Uh, radiator just ended up using some little salt tappers in the top right there. It has rubber in the bottom to ride on, so it does have some flex. Because I realized from the Mazda being completely solid mounted, that you end up bowing a radiator if the front end moves around much. 
Alex is taking apart and putting them together the front end 4,000 times, trying to figure out all the headlight brackets and everything. We're missing a couple uh, springs up here. But otherwise, now I'm going to go ahead and take the fuel rails off, put some injectors in there. Ended up getting a set off of uh, eBay, but they're a genuine, they're from some company, but they're a genuine Siemens Deca 80. So these or what I originally had in the Camaro. I ran a set of these. They're awesome injectors. They're bulletproof. They work really good. They just seem to work well on E. I think you can make like 750, 800 horsepower on E. So this should work out to use these to make on methanol to make like 450, 500 pretty easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rails back off, insert all the injectors, and then bolt everything down. I just kind of had everything loose because I knew I needed to get these in. So I'm going to go ahead and install those now. All right, so to install these O-rings, you want to take a little bit of silicone or oil, whatever you want to call it. Put it right here on the O-rings, like that. And then it will help you install it right here into this. So now I'm going to go ahead and install it into the fuel rail, just like that. Go ahead and do all four of them. Make sure they're seated. And then work them into the intake. So I went ahead and also put some silicone on the bottom o-ring so I can go ahead and seat it into the intake. Today I'm going to work on making some mounts for the fuel cell here. We're also working on a few other random things in the truck just trying to prep for wiring. But we are going to go ahead and make some mounts. I believe I'm going to go ahead and build some old movie ticket out of the truck. But uh, I'm gonna build some mounts that come up and over that are like straps for this, hold it down, kind of like a battery mount. Um, I was gonna weld some aluminum tabs on it and then like come down and mount it to the bed. But with as much uh, back and forth as this truck's gonna do, I don't want it to eventually work the tab and then crack the fuel tank and have a leak. So I'm just gonna go ahead and build straps over it and mount it and then it leaves the fuel cell just the way they sent it to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. I got some flat strap over here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut about 36 inches I ended up measuring this thing I just went and kind of wrapped this around here like that kind of hard to do with one hand but uh, it comes out to about 32 inches all the way around the tank and then I add a few inches to put a bolt in here it's gonna do two wrap it right through here come up over and right through here down there and uh, go ahead and make those real quick and then we will have the fuel tank mounted and then we can go ahead and move on to like wiring it and stuff like that. Alrighty, so there is some straps. Just went ahead and took straight material, 36 inches, about $11 in material from the local little hardware store and bent over some strap there. Just bent it, bent it there. I went ahead and left these with a little bit of space as you guys can see. Uh, I'm gonna end up putting a rubber pad underneath it so then when the tank gets bolted down, it actually has something kind of to help with vibrations and also it rubbing on the chassis. So I'm not beating up the tank, just protect it on the bottom side, strap it down, and then it'll have its own little suspension, if you will, with the rubber pad. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill some holes, get those ready, and then eventually I'll have to go to the store and try to look for some rubber pad uh, that works to set underneath this. Run to the hardware store, we ended up with some rubber mat. So not only will it keep my feet nice and cozy while I'm working in here, I'm going to rob one of these squares out that just so happens to be 12 by 12 to go underneath the fuel tank in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and then go ahead and set that underneath the fuel tank and bolt the fuel tank down and see how it looks with this underneath it. That is a little thick, but I'm just going to go ahead and drill it and mount it and see once these actually pull down and kind of collapse that rubber if it looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and drill the four holes real quick. Step one of drilling holes, make sure that you don't drill into a cross brace. But now we're good. So I got everything. I'm glad I did that on the first hole though. So slid the tank this way a little bit so it clears everything. And then went ahead and cleaned this area. So you can see it's far cleaner than the rest of the back of the truck. But at least on the tank will be clean. And then I clean that out once we get to actually drive it over to a car wash. So we're going to go ahead and now finally finish mounting this tank. So what's that thing you got to do? That ain't going nowhere. All right, perfect. So it's all mounted up. Call that good to go. Went ahead and zip tied some line and stuff. I still need to get a little bit of edging to protect the line over here on that hole. As you can see where I hit the center brace there too. Gosh dang it. But otherwise everything looks pretty decent. And I think that's gonna work out pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next thing. 
So after another quick run to the store, we got some more material. I ended up picking up some round two, which I needed earlier, I knew about. Then I got some material here for, uh, this is actually gonna be the upper and lower plate to mount the shifter to. So between the round bar and this plate, I'll make a little shifter mount to raise it up near the seat. And then I'm gonna use this as a relay panel, but more on that later. So I need to come in here and figure out exactly what I wanna do. I've been looking at some wiring and all that, so I made sure I bought some of that stuff, but I need the shifter here. Uh, everything's hooked up to the tranny already, but I need to mount it up to about here, I think, uh, with a removable mount. So I think four bolts on the flat spot here will work out pretty good, come up, and then mount this to another plate up above but be able to remove the whole mount in case I need to pull the seat out or eventually the seat will probably go away and then have like two buckets in here. Alex is actually gonna work on getting all the engine mount bolts out and swapping them all over to matching hardware because we had some 13 head bolts and 15 headed bolts. So I'm gonna swap all those out real quick so they all match and put some lock washers on it too so they don't vibrate loose. So a lock washer then washer like you have it here or flip it? Flip it. Okay, that's what I thought. I just like to do that at the store every time for some reason. I don't know why. Put them together wrong. Huh? Yep. Plate that will bolt to the shifter. Little bit of round tube that will end up going in there and mounting it right to the floorboard. So I got to still make the plate that mounts to the floorboard with the four bolt holes. It will bolt it down and then that will raise it up and put the shifter in a decent spot for me. So there is the shifter mount. Got it in here. Not thrilled with that. That bottom plate needs to be heavier duty, and especially with trying to like tie it down over this uh, carpet and pad. So, really, if I want that to be solid, I need to make it where it bolts to the floor underneath the carpet, and then probably cut it and bring it up through the carpet. This carpet's junk, so I'll figure something out. But definitely, that bottom plate needs to be a little stiffer because the uh, the shifter has a little play in it, which I didn't pay too much attention when I bought that material, and I should have that it. So it has, I mean, it'll work, but I'm not too happy with it. So probably gonna cut just that bottom plate off. I'll use it as template, transfer it to a heavier gauge plate, re-weld it and fix that there. But otherwise, shifter pretty much has a mount. The fuel tank is mounted. And now we can start moving on to doing some of the wiring in the truck. So I'm gonna start with doing like the main power wires and grounds and all of that and then move on to wiring up the holly terminator so if you guys would like to see some wiring videos on this thing make sure you hit that like subscribe and share button we'll see you in the next video